Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Christ the King Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. I'm Relay Readers at Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link underneath this video on Facebook and on YouTube, or you can head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com, look for the publications link at the top of the webpage, uh, then scroll down and look for today's date, and then you should be able to uh, open up today's bulletin and then go ahead and print that out. Now that you've acquired the bulletin for today's service, I ask that you uh, turn your attention to the announcements found on the back of the bulletin. Uh, Neighbor to Neighbor has asked us for a donation of 50 cans of cranberry sauce by November 23rd for Christmas. Uh, feel free to leave them at the church when you pick up your meal today uh, for those who have uh, RSVP'd with Rose and Susie, and I will deliver them this week. Uh, for more information about where to drop them off, contact me via uh, social media uh, if you don't want me to take them um, from the church. Um, our username is Central Press PB. Uh, it is stewardship season. Pledge cards should, be, uh, should have been received this week. Uh, please return your... Uh, card via mail uh, before the end of the month, or you can return them today when you uh, visit the church to pick up those uh, meals uh, from the Von Tunglands. And we uh, also thank you for those. Um, the There was a couple that didn't get sent out, uh, Justine missed. Um, she, uh, I was able to get a hold of her this week. Um, those letters probably won't go out, didn't go out until yesterday or today, I think. Um, or I should say Friday or Saturday. Um, so you might not get those, a uh, few of them, you might not have gotten your cards uh, until Monday or Tuesday. Um, but again, please return them as soon as you can so we can get uh, prepared for the budget. Uh, the session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Uh, keep in contact with via social media. Again, our username is Central Press PB, or at our website for announcements about any special services or when we plan to resume in-person worship. Uh, archives of our online services can be found on our Facebook and our YouTube pages. Links to each are at our website, www.centralpresspb.com. Uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. The God of heaven has made his home on earth. Christ dwells among us and is one with us. Highest in all creation, he lives among the least. He journeys with the rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and drink the water of life. Come now, all who hunger, and be filled with good things. Come now, all who seek, and be warmed by the fire of love. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Please join me in the prayer of confession that can be found in your bulletin together and then silently. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ as Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him and are slow to acknowledge his rule. We give allegiance to the powers of this world and fail to be governed by justice and love. In your mercy, forgive us. Raise us to acclaim him as ruler of all, and that we, be, we may be loyal ambassadors, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ that, that is that when we face ourselves and God with awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. For this week's children's sermon, uh, we have uh, Sila and Scarlett Munn performing a song called Thanksgiving, uh, and we'll go ahead and throw that over to them now. One, for each blessed day, two, every breath I take, three, for my family, four, all they've been to me, five, just to be alive, six, for the earth and sky, and seven, for heaven, for every good thing that I have comes from God, every day, every hour, 
There are blessings he sends without number or it. If I counted a hundred or a thousand, I'm sure there would still be more to be thankful for. Eight for the chance to grow. Nine heart and hands and soul. Ten for the eyes to see. Oh, God has given me. I could go on and on. Counting will hold him on. I know he is with me. For every good thing that I have comes from God. Every day, every hour. There are blessings he sends without number or it. If I counted a hundred or a thousand, I'm sure there would still be more. There would still be more and more to be thankful for. Thanks, girls. That was a great, great song. We really do appreciate it. And now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves for this uh, week's sermon, When Do We Not See Him? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the prophet Ezekiel, beginning in the 34th chapter at verse 11 and proceeding through verse 24. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There, shall, they, there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, I shall judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? When you drink of clear water, must you foul the rest with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have fouled with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken." Our second reading comes from the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with verse 31 and proceeding through verse 46. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd se separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. And the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear. That hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth, as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. There's something deep inside of us that longs for that day when everything wrong in this world will be set right when all the bitter rivalries are settled when all the lies are exposed when all who have suffered injustice are finally and forever vindicated and let's be honest we all like to assume that we will be the ones who are vindicated one of the truly terrifying things about the image of separating the sheep from the goats, however, is that none of us are sheep all the time. There are many times when we are all very much like the goats. But I would also venture to say that it works in the opposite way as well. Those we have pegged as the goats, those we just know deep down will someday get what is coming to them can and do behave like sheep as well. Where then do we and they ultimately fit into God's scheme of judgment? Typically, we in the church spend a lot of time talking about how the sheep and the goats are different. The sheep are moved by compassion to act, and whatever moves the goats it's certainly not compassion because they do nothing. The sheep become the ideal for Christian discipleship. The goats become the tragic reminder of a wasted life. Sheep don't just talk about love, they exhibit it. The goats don't even know what love is. What we seldom, if ever, hear about, however, is how the sheep and the goats are alike. 
And I believe their similarity is as striking as are their differences. Because in this passage today, we are told that neither the sheep nor the goats recognize the Lord in their midst. Which raises the question in my mind, why? Why didn't they recognize the Lord in their midst? Why don't we? Why is it that we all seem to move about in a cloud of ignorance? I borrow that phrase from Thornton Wilder's Pulitzer Prize-winning play, Our Town. In the final act of this play, one of the central characters, Emily, is given a chance following her death to view a scene from her past. Others who have died before her have urged her not to do so, but she is determined and eventually they relent <clears throat> and she is allowed to revisit a day from her past and she chooses to go back to view her 12th birthday. In doing so, however, she discovers that there were numerous things that she either had failed to notice completely or had forgotten about in the intervening years. She is both surprised and dismayed to see how quickly life moves and how little she or anyone else pays attention to what is happening around them while it is happening. In the end, <clears throat> Emily breaks down and begins sobbing as she says, I can't go on. It goes so fast. We don't have time to look at one another. And she then turns <clears throat> to the stage manager and asks abruptly through her tears, do any human beings ever realize life while they live it? Every minute? And the answer comes back, no. Though the saints and poets do some. Later, Emily tells those who had preceded her in death that she should have listened to them and not gone back to revisit her past, to which one of them says, yes, now you know. Now you know. That's what it was to be alive, to move about in a cloud of ignorance, to go up and down, trampling on the feelings of those about you, to spend and waste time as though you had a million years, to be always at the mercy of one self-centered passion or another. Now you know that's the happy existence you wanted to go back to. Ignorance and blindness. I believe, <clears throat> I believe to ask or to move about in a cloud of ignorance is to ask, am I my brother's keeper? It is to fail to notice the multitudes of people we encountered each and every day. It is the sad and tragic tale of human history, rife with man's inhumanity to man. To move about in a cloud of ignorance is to ask, Lord, when was it that we saw you? And hear Jesus reply with the question, when did you not? There's an aspect in Judaism known as the Shaliak principle. It's based on the Hebrew verb shalach, which means to send. And the principle states that a person's representative is as the person himself or herself. Thus, an ambassador would speak in the name of and with the authority of the king who sent him. Matthew's gospel makes clear that in the person of Jesus Christ, God is with us. But he also goes to great lengths to show that God is for us. The child whom Joseph is instructed to name Jesus will save his people from their sins, which is the reason why he is sent, and will also be the reason why Jesus will send others in order to make disciples of all nations. 
It's the driving force behind Jesus's words where he says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It should come as no great surprise then that Jesus would extend this principle to encompass all those whose lives are lived at best on the fringes of society. The littlest, the last, the lost, the least, the left out, or as Jesus calls them, the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. But this principle did not begin or end with Jesus. We see evidence of it in the words of Ezekiel as well. This principle did not begin or end with Ezekiel either. Yes, those who were placed in positions of authority were to represent God in how they governed the people. But as is all too often the case now, as it was then, humanity forgets that most basic component of our spiritual DNA, which says that we are all created in God's image and that we are all placed here on earth as God's stewards to care for everyone and everything that God has made. Which is part of Ezekiel's scathing indictment in the verses just preceding this morning's passage, where he says of the shepherds of Israel, their leaders, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought out the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. The result of all of this is that the sheep strayed and the consequence of their straying was exile in Babylon. But in our reading today, God promises that something miraculous was about to happen. He promises, I myself will shepherd my sheep. I will make them lie down. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the straight. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Exile was about to end. But an even more miraculous thing is pointed, pointed to in this text. Because this text points to the glorious future when the Messiah would come. And as our great and good shepherd would live, so too has he called us to live? But alas, we move about in a cloud of ignorance. It amazes me how so many of us can and do underestimate even the simplest act of kindness. As if a word of encouragement or a smile or a card sent, or a call made, or the simple fact that we were there to help share those anxious and burdensome moments in someone else's life were insignificant, or that they made no difference at all. Lord, when did we see you? But alas, we move in a cloud of ignorance. I'm amazed at how so many Christians can talk with such fervor about the necessity of a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and then spend much of their lives demonizing others created in God's own image. Lord, when did we see you? But alas, we move about in a cloud of ignorance. But the good news for you and me is that we are not condemned to remain in that cloud of ignorance. In word and sacrament and countless other ways, we are invited to open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to the abiding presence 
of God in our midst. All we need to do is use the God-given grace we already have and slow down and take notice. God is here with us. God is here for us. And God is meeting us in the people we encounter every single day, saying we're in words both plain and clear. I am here. So when you think about it, we never need to ask, Lord, when did we see you? Because in reality, when do we not? To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, uh, which will be taken electronically this week. Again, uh, you can visit our website, www.centralprespb.com. Look for the Donate Now link on the top right-hand corner of the webpage, and then you can make your tithe electronically that way. Uh, you're also encouraged to uh, mail your uh, tithe in to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when, at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share, our, share excuse me, our joys and concerns, if there are any. Um, I believe there was a couple uh, mentioned in the, um, in the CPC chat. Um, contact me via social media or the church at Central Prez, um, Central Prez PB. And if you uh, haven't gotten it into that chat room and, and would like to, uh, we'll get you added. Um, this week, the first thing I want to start off with is a, um, a, uh, a praise report. Um, we want to give our heartfelt thanks and appreciation to uh, Rose and Susie Von Tunglin, who uh, took it upon themselves to offer uh, up a meal in place of this uh, year's harvest dinner. Um, we are very appreciative of all of their hard work, and um, we, we, their, um, their deeds do not go unnoticed. Uh, by the members of the congregation and uh, by uh, uh, Tim as well. Um, we uh, also want to remind everyone that you can pick up your meals if you RSVP with them between the, uh, the times of 1130 this morning, about a little bit after this service ends up, and um, 1230 uh, this afternoon. So you got about an hour to come by and pick up, um, pick up your meals. Um, for those who have, do not, uh, have not gotten your stewardship letter, um, we apologize. There was some mix-ups at the office. Um, if you don't receive it by the end of this week, feel, please feel free to uh, get in contact with us. Um, and I plan on going ahead and posting the stewardship letter to um, the website as well this week. Um, we were also asked to continue to keep Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers. Um, Brad is still con uh, continuously uh, having issues with his uh, health. Um, we are continuing to keep Anita Rodriguez in uh, our prayers. 
Um, we are also continuing to keep Jane Glover in our prayers. Jane is, uh, is our Laura and my neighbor uh, who is recovering from surgery. Uh, she broke her hip. And then uh, we are continuing to keep uh, Dale Chambliss who is still recovering from COVID-19 in, in, um, in your prayers. Um, we uh, also continue to keep all of those who are affected by COVID-19, uh, those who are, who are in public facing professions, our medical professionals, our um, law enforcement officers, uh, and our retail workers all in prayer. Um, we need to be very careful uh, as the numbers are spiking and uh, continue to wear your mask and social distance and stay home at all times if possible. Um, I know that is impossible for all of us, or for a lot of us, but uh, please uh, do, uh, do what you can to keep the spread down because <clears throat> Not only is it affecting um, people who are contracting the disease, but all of the uh, hospitalizations are affecting um, the rate of care that people are getting in um, in the hospitals for COVID-19 because they're so overwhelmed, but also they're, they're running out of beds for people who have other issues, including heart attacks, people who are in, in um, accidents, car accidents and, and, and such. So uh, please do your, uh, do your um, do your best to stop the spread. Um, we also want to continue to keep our nation and our world in prayer and uh, please grant the reconciliation of the world back to the Lord in the coming days. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please keep Brad Von Tunglin Anita Rodriguez and Jane Glover in your care. Please bless those um, those individuals and those who we did not mention, but you know of who need medical attention and please grant the wisdom and the knowledge to the doctors who are, who are um, treating those individuals um, and grant their speedy recovery. Um, we also pray for Dale Chambliss and all of those who are affected by COVID-19 including the medical professionals, law enforcement officers, uh, frontline retail workers, please protect those individuals from, from getting this horrible disease. Uh, we also ask that you be with those uh, families who have lost loved ones uh, to the disease. Uh, we also ask that you bless our congregation and our friends and neighbors uh, from getting the disease as well. Give us hope to be better. Uh, Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.